No player in tennis history puts the bees in the phrase bad boy of tennis quite like Nick Kyrgios. He's the poster boy for unruly behavior at the sport's highest level and has been hit with more fines than any other player. So stay tuned and don't go away because Nick Kyrgios' booed, effort question and loss to Taylor Fritz as running war with umpire takes over. First up, how did things flare up at the Cincinnati Masters? You're about to find out. Despite his hot temper and sometimes questionable behavior, the one thing you can't deny is that Aussie tennis star Nick Kyrgios is an outstanding tennis player who plays his heart out with everything he's got every time he steps onto the court. Kyrgios was defeated in straight sets by Taylor Fritz of the USA at the Cincinnati Masters in the midst of an ongoing feud with umpire Renaud Lichtenstein and a possible knee injury. Kyrgios' 6-3, 6-2 loss was only his second defeat since the final round at Wimbledon. The war of the words between Kyrgios and Lichtenstein began not long after the match with Fritz began and heated up quickly. Some observers felt that Kyrgios was simply in one of his moods and he seemed more concerned with what was going on off and around the court than his match with Fritz. Kyrgios complained about standards and pointed out various problems with the court's surface. But wait, Kyrgios wasn't done there. He proceeded to turn his anger and frustration to the fact that fans were walking in and out between points. And during the third game of the match, Fritz had a 2-1 lead when Kyrgios started complaining about the distraction caused by flickering screens on the court. Next up, what did the war of the words between umpire Renard Lichtenstein and Nick Kyrgios look like? Let's find out. In the heat of the moment when Kyrgios was all fired up, he looked at Lichtenstein and said, the highest level we play in and you guys can't get something like that right. It's embarrassing. Kyrgios added a dash of profanity as well, saying, yesterday you couldn't even clean this thing up. I was drinking someone else's water. Today, the screens. What about tomorrow? Standards. Standards. Do something about it. At that time, Lichtenstein warned Kyrgios that he would be penalized if his swearing persisted. And he told Kyrgios, I told you. I called already. And I'm going to call again and again and again. A short while later, Kyrgios apparently had more things he wanted to get off his chest and angrily turned to Lichtenstein once again saying, people walking around midpoint. The people Kyrgios was referring to, of course, were the fans. Lichtenstein responded, stop using the F word or you'll get a penalty every time. Sometimes you play with them moving. Sometimes you don't. But if you thought Kyrgios had finally gotten it all out, well, you'd be wrong. Kyrgios further criticized Lichtenstein's ability to do his job, shouting, Is it normal for people to leave in the middle of the point? Announce it. You have a microphone. What's your job? To control the match? Why aren't you controlling the match? Why don't you do your job properly? If everyone did their job, I would have no problem. Despite Kyrgios' encore drama, tennis pro Andy Roddick spoke of his overall performance and said, I think it puts Kyrgios in the top two. Maybe three favorites for the U.S. Open. Up next, is a fan really suing Nick Kyrgios? Let's take a look. Back in July during the Wimbledon men's final, a female spectator was accused by Nick Kyrgios of being drunk and distracting him. Now she's threatening to sue the Australian tennis star for defamation. Was temporarily removed from center court after an outburst by Kyrgios. Paulus said Kyrgios' comments amounted to a reckless and entirely baseless allegation against me. Kyrgios scolded umpire Renard Lichtenstein saying, she's distracting me when I'm serving in the Wimbledon final. There's no other bigger occasion. You didn't believe me and then she did it again. It nearly cost me the game. Why she's still here? She's drunk out of her mind. Speaking to me in the middle of the game. Game. What's acceptable? Lichtenstein quickly responded to Kyrgios and said that he didn't know who Kyrgios was referring to. And Kyrgios clarified the matter by saying, It's the one with the dress. The one who looks like she's had about 700 drinks, bro. Paulus claims she only had two drinks and was simply trying to encourage Kyrgios. She further explained that Kyrgios' comments, which were broadcast to millions of viewers around the world, have caused her and her family a great deal of harm and distress. Stay tuned and don't go away, because we're about to bring you the latest in pro tennis news. Next up, do women in tennis use different sized tennis balls than their male counterparts? You're about to find out. For some reason that still eludes me, women in professional tennis use different sized tennis balls than male players. And now a second female tennis star has spoken out against the rule, and the US Open is under pressure to rectify the situation. Paula Badosa is the second top player to put pressure on the US Open to change their tennis balls for the female players. Badosa's comments came after world number one women's tennis star Iga Swantek harshly criticized the lighter tennis balls given to women as horrible, and called on the Women's Tennis Association to allow women to use the same balls as men. In the lead up to the Grand Slam, Badosa and Swantek were critical of the WTA's decision to provide female players with different, lighter balls compared to the ones used by men. Swantek, a two-time Grand Slam champion, says that she and Bedosa held meetings with the WTA boss to try and overturn the WTA's decision, but had no success. Bedosa even took to social media and said, very unfavorable conditions for the players and for the show. Then we complain that there are many mistakes in tactics and intelligence have been lost in points, while dealing with the faster courts and impossible balls to control. And in a recent interview, Swantek said, I think those balls are horrible, especially after like three games are really hard playing. They are getting more and more light. In the end, you can't even serve at 170 kilometers an hour because it's gonna fly like crazy. I think they're pretty bad. I always like to keep an open mind and look at both sides of the coin. But I've got to say, this rule certainly seems discriminatory and assumes that all women are inferior to men in terms of strength. So yeah, I take issue with that. Women want to be treated as equals and they aren't looking for preferential treatment. And the assumption that all women are weaker than men is obviously outdated and offensive. What do you think? Should women play with the same tennis balls as men? Drop a comment and give us your thoughts. 
Sports. Up next, will an unvaccinated Novak Djokovic be able to play at the U.S. Open? Let's find out. The U.S. government has introduced new measures that will loosen COVID restrictions on quarantine and social distancing. Because of these changes, there's renewed hope that Djokovic will be able to play in the U.S. Open. However, it should be noted that at the time of this recording, Djokovic still can't play in the U.S. Open. And he confessed that after his Wimbledon victory, he doesn't feel confident about the odds of playing at the U.S. Open. America's Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC for short, have announced that they would be relaxing entry and quarantine requirements and regulations. But for now, those relaxed changes apply to U.S. citizens only, and not foreign visitors. So if nothing else changes, Djokovic will not be heading to New York for the U.S. Open, unless he is granted some sort of special exemption. And if such an exemption were to be granted to Djokovic, it would undoubtedly anger millions of people. The current U.S. travel restrictions prevent Djokovic from traveling to the country, as foreigners who are not vaccinated against COVID-19 are strictly forbidden from entering America. Djokovic has missed out on tournaments in Montreal and Cincinnati in the lead-up to the U.S. Open. Finally, is Austrian tennis star Dominic Team ready for some U.S. Open action? The last time Dominic Team played a tournament in the United States was in the midst of the COVID pandemic. The U.S. Open had zero fans in attendance, and Team secured a comeback after being down two sets and managed to claim victory over Alexander Zverev in a tense final round. Team's greatest dream was realized, but since then, the past two years have been a little rough for the tennis star. He was out with numerous injuries from June of 2021 to March of 2022. He was also out of action due to illness and was forced to miss the Cincinnati Majors. But now, Team has his sights set on the U.S. Open in New York, and he's ready for action. In a recent interview, Team said, I think it's pretty similar to New York, as it's not that far away. It's humid and can be pretty hot when the sun is out, so it's perfect preparation. The tournament is unique because we're like guests of Wake Forest University. I enjoy being here. There are not too many distractions. Perfect focus on the matches, on the training. That's a wrap for today's video. Thank you for watching.